Uh, before we get started, Myra, is there anything you want to share uh, from the council member's office? Currently, I don't have any information to share. All right, thank you. I'll turn it over to Chad. Jeff, I think I just saw that Alicia joined. Did she want to share anything from the council member's office? Hi, thank you so much. Yes, uh, just a regular just engagement with the community. Really appreciate the opportunity and thank you all for being online to communicate this to the residents of the of the area. Looking forward to it. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone to the pre construction community meeting for the fiscal year 2018 safe routes to school improvements project. This project is around the area of Bonnie Bray, Diamond Hill, and W.J. Turner Elementary Schools. This is city project number 101264, and it's located in council districts two and four. Um, I'm the project manager for the project for the city of Fort Worth. My name is Chad Allen. The project engineer is Dunaway Associates, and the contractor is Urban Infra Construction, LLC. So I'm gonna go through this um, presentation right now. It's gonna take me 15, 16, 17 minutes to get through it. Um, I'm gonna start with some introductions. We just heard from the district directors. Thank you very much for attending the meeting. Um, and then I wanna introduce some city staff. Again, my name is Chad Allen. I'm the project manager for the project. My supervisor is also on the call. Um, her name is Lisette Acevedo. Our communication specialist, Jeff, was introducing the meeting. Jeff Allen is, is on the call. And I believe our construction inspector, um, Steve Johnson, is on the call. Steve, thanks for coming tonight. You might be able to help us answer some questions later. Um, we also have our project engineer, Josh and Lee from Dunaway Associates is on the call. And um, I believe Yaju and Aaron from Urban Infrastructure are also infrastructure are also on the call. Um, I, th I think that's that's most. Oh, I see a couple people from our materials testing lab too. So um, I appreciate you all attending the meeting tonight. So the purpose of this meeting is to talk about the construction of the fiscal year 2018 Safe Routes to School project. So I'm going to show an overall map of the project and talk about the overall scope. And then we'll look specifically at the scope of the project around the three schools, Bonnie Bray, Diamond Hill, and W.J. Turner. And then we're going to talk about the typical construction process and what folks in the neighborhood are going to see when the contractor shows up to your um, block to begin construction. And that will include project phasing and traffic control also. We'll talk about the project schedule when the project is going to start. We're hoping to start construction of the project next month. And then also the residents will be notified uh, about a week to 10 days prior to construction. So we'll talk about that notification. And then, like Jeff said, at the end of the presentation, we'll try to answer all your questions. So this is an overall map of the projects. Um, this actually shows seven different elementary schools right now. The city of Fort Worth next month is about to begin construction of. Um, safe routes to school improvements around seven different elementary schools in the city. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about these 3 northern schools. We're going to focus on Bonnie Bray at 3504 Kimbo Road. Diamond Hill at 2000 Dewey Street and WJ Turner at 3000 Northwest 26th Street. The overall scope of the project, we're going to be constructing improvements within a quarter mile radius around each school and our work is going to include new sidewalks. We're also going to be replacing some existing sidewalks that are non compliant and that means that they don't currently meet our current standards for accessibility. Also, they might be in really bad shape or they might be a tripping hazard. They could be cracked. Um, things like that sidewalks that are in really bad shape are going to be um, reconstructed also. We're going to be rebuilding a lot of the driveways um, in the project area. There's a good chance that if you're a resident in the project area, that your driveway approach is going to be reconstructed. We'll be building new curb ramps at a lot of the intersections, most of the intersections in the project area, and then signs and pavement markings, and that includes crosswalks. Also at Diamond Hill, we're gonna be doing curb bulb house. At in Schwartz Avenue at 2 different locations. We're going to be doing those at Dewey Street and Lorraine Street. And the same thing in around WJ Turner, we're going to be constructing curb bulb outs in Hazel Avenue at Robinson Street and at Macy Avenue. So I wanted to show this graphic 
to talk of, to show the curb bulb outs that we're going to be building. This is sort of an example of what we're talking about. Um, in this picture over here, you can see that, um, you know, this curb line originally could extend just directly straight through the intersection here and here in both directions. But as part of our project, we're going to come in and build these bulb outs at the corners of the intersections. And what this allows to happen is it promotes slowdown of the traffic. So it makes the intersection safer by causing traffic to slow down through the intersection. And then it also um, makes these crossings in the crosswalks area to be shorter. So um, it just makes the intersection safer by slowing down traffic and making the crossings of the streets shorter. So we're gonna be constructing these bulb outs at four of the intersections, two at Diamond Hill and two at WJ Turner. So this is a project map that shows the scope of the project around Bonnie Bray Elementary School. You can see the school right here. Over here is a list of the streets that we're gonna be working on around Bonnie Bray. We're gonna be doing construction of sidewalks in six of the streets around Bonnie Bray Elementary School. And over here on the map in yellow, you'll see where we're proposing to build the new sidewalks. So the yellow lines indicate the new sidewalks and then the blue or cyan lines, those are the existing sidewalks in the neighborhood. And then also this list over here to the left sort of indicates how the contractor intends to start and end their work around the school. So they plan on starting construction in Bonnie Bray Avenue, and then they'll wrap up their construction in Northeast 28th Street. So over here on the map in Bonnie Bray, um, we're going to build new sidewalks on the east side of Bonnie Bray from 29th to Premier Street. North is up. You can see the north arrow right here. In Premier Street, we're going to build sidewalks on north side of the road from Bonnie Bray over to Mesquite Road. In Fairview, on the east side of the road, also from Kimbo to Premier Street. In Mesquite Road, on the east side from Wesley Street to Kimbo Road. And then in Eleanor, also on the east side from Northeast 28th up to North Beach Street. And then down here in Northeast 28th, we're gonna fill in a couple of the gaps in the existing sidewalks. So one of the gaps is right here, south of Bonnie Bray Elementary School. And then another gap is right here, just west of Eleanor Street. So this map shows the work we're gonna be doing around Bonnie Bray Elementary School. And then um, here's the map around Diamond Hill. You can see we're doing a lot of work around Diamond Hill. I think- Chad, I'm sorry to interrupt real quick. Hey, um, go ahead. Have, have I'm sorry, just a quick question. Have you all engaged this school to uh, let them know about the project coming in? Yes, yeah, so we've um, been coordinating with the school specifically about um, the fact that uh, that we're having this meeting now. So the schools were notified. Um, we we had also talked to them about this project previously years ago, but as far as the upcoming construction, yes, they will be notified. Um, just like the residents who are going to be affected, they will be notified prior to construction. And um, we're also going to limit our shutdowns of the streets directly adjacent to the school um, during times when children are gonna be dropped off or picked up around the school. So we will be working closely with the schools and um, the busing facilities to alert them and to um, communicate with them about our construction. Thank you. Sure. Um, I think there's 12 streets on this list, and um, you can see that there's a lot of yellow lines on the maps. We're doing a lot of work around Diamond Hill. Again, the contractor is going to start in Schwartz Avenue and then end in Ronald Street. So on the map here uh, in Schwartz Avenue, you can see the con we're going to be doing work from Northeast 28th to Veracruz and Schwartz Avenue on both sides of the road. Over here in Glendale, we're going to be building new sidewalk on the south side of the street and then in Northeast 28th Street between Dean Road and Schwartz Avenue on both sides of the roadway. In Lorraine Street, um, most of the work in Lorraine is at the intersections where we're going to be rebuilding the curb ramps at all of the intersections between Dean Road and Schwartz Avenue. And um, Northeast, Northeast 29th Street, most of our work is on the north side of the street. And then also the curb ramps at the intersection, and that's between Dean Road and Weber Street. And Dean Road, uh, or in Dewey Street, um, it's both sides of the street between Dean Road and Runnels. And then we're going to focus on the intersection and the um, curb ramps at the intersections. Again, it's between Dean Road and Schwartz in Dewey Street. 
Um, the same thing basically in Northeast 30th Street, we're going to be doing work on the north side of the road between Dean Road and Runnels. And then we're going to be rebuilding curb ramps at all of the intersections all the way up to Schwartz. Um, in Hale and Hutchinson, you can see Hutchinson here. We're doing work on both sides of the road from Northeast 28th over to Vera Cruz. And in Hale, um, we're also filling in some sidewalk gaps here between Dewey and Northeast 31st, and then also curb ramps at these intersections. And then finally, in Runnell Street, we're building new sidewalk on the west side of the road between Northeast 28th and Northeast 31st, and then also some on the south side of the road between 29th and 31st also. So we're doing a lot of work around Diamond Hill. Um, and then we can look at the map of W.J. Turner. The same thing here. I think we're doing work in nine streets around W.J. Turner. The contractor is going to begin their work at Northeast 25th Street and head towards Northeast 27th Street and then start in Kearney and work up towards Rock Island, uh, approximately in this order as shown on the list on the left. So in um, Northeast 25th Street, we're based um, north is sort of diagonally and up. We're doing work on the east side of the road in Northeast 25th Street from Kearney to Rock Island. In 26th Street, it's also on the east side of the road from Kearney to Rock Island. And then in Azel, we switch to the west side of the road from Kearney to Rock Island. And the same thing in Northwest 27th Street, new sidewalks on the west side of the road from Kearney, um, all the way to Robinson Street in Northwest 27th. And then down here in Kearney, we're building new sidewalk from 23rd to 28th on the south side of the road. And in Leiden, it's on the north side of the road from 23rd to Lorraine. In Macy, on the north side of the road from um, west of 23rd to Lorraine. And then in Robinson Street, we're doing work on both sides of the road. Um, the north side of the road and the south side of the road. Um, I do see some questions popping up in the chat list and uh, uh, chat box, and I'll be trying to answer those at the end of the presentation, but we do see those. I just wanted to let you know that. So this is the typical construction process that's going to, going to occur. So if you're a resident in the neighborhoods, this is what you'll see happening as the contractor um, moves into your block to begin work on sidewalks and driveways in your block. So the first thing you should see are notifications. Um, you should be getting a door hanger on your door within seven to 10 days of before construction starts. And you might also see a project sign show up in your neighborhood. So a project sign with the project name and telephone numbers that you can call if you have any concerns about the work and then also door hangers on your door. When the contractor moves into your block, they'll first set implement their traffic control devices and also their erosion control plans. So you might see cones and barrels set up for traffic control and signs. And then the erosion control um, items are basically st um, stormwater inlet protection to keep soil and dirt from going into the storm drain system. So if you have a curb inlet in front of your house or in front of your neighbor's house, you might see the contractor put up hay bales or erosion control logs to protect that curb inlet. After that, they'll actually start work and start some site clearing. So they'll be removing grass and dirt and um, a, a, a in the work area. And at that time, they'll also be doing some utility adjustments. So if you have a sanitary sewer clean out that's near the sidewalk area that may need to be relocated or the top of it might need to be adjusted or a water valve top that might need to be adjusted, they'll do that work before they start doing any concrete paving. And then finally, they'll start, um, they usually start with the driveway approaches. So you'll see them demolish existing driveway approaches and prepare to build new driveway approaches and then build those driveways. And then they'll start the sidewalk construction and then also the curb ramp construction at the intersections. After that, the contractor installs sod um, adjacent to the sidewalk and adjacent, adjacent to the driveways and all the disturbed area um, to put new grass down. And then finally, when they're done, they'll remove the, their traffic control work, and then you'll see them doing the final cleanup, and then they'll move off of your block. So this is the typical construction process that you'll see start happening um, next month when the contractor mobilizes. And here are a few photos of, the, of what you'll see happening in your neighborhoods and maybe at your driveways. On the left, this photograph shows drive, a driveway reconstruction 
We were talking about the approach, which is basically this area of the driveway. This is the area of the driveway in almost all of the locations that will be reconstructed. So this is the driveway approach. And then right here, you see where the sidewalk crosses the driveway. So this is the typical work that will occur at each um, lot along the project. And you've, you can see they've cl um, cleared the site and cleared the grass and dirt on either side of the driveway to prepare for the sidewalk construction. And then the picture on the right, you can see the new sidewalk and the new driveway. This is what your um, lots in the area will look like right after construction. And then um, on the next slide, you can see this is what it will look at like after the contractor installs the sod and everything is returned back to normal. And these photos also show a couple different scenarios for the sidewalk construction. The one on the left shows the sidewalk up against the back of the curb and the driveway is reconstructed like this. And then the one on the right shows the sidewalk offset from the back of the curb. So there's grass on both sides of the sidewalk. Um, both of these scenarios occur throughout the project. It sort of all depends on obstructions. Over here on the left, you can see there is this street light. And so um, that was an obstruction. And so they put the sidewalk along the back of the curb. Over here, there weren't really any obstructions. And so we set it back um, away from the back of the curb because that's sort of preferred. I saw another question pop up in the chat box. I apologize. I'm definitely not ignoring you. We're going to answer those in just a minute. Here's the project schedule. We were planning to start construction next month in April. Uh, it has a pro there's a project duration of 300 calendar today, so we expect to complete the work next February, February of 2023. Typical working hours for the contractor are listed here um, Monday through Friday. The contractor is allowed to work from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Around the school, like we were talking about earlier, we're going to coordinate with school drop off and pick up and busing and we're going, we're asking the contractor to limit any work directly around the school and any street closures between the hours of 730 and 830 and 330 and 430 Monday through Friday to avoid interrupting that school drop off and pick up. Um, the contractor is allowed to work weekend hours from 9 to 5 if they request that in writing and if it is improved, you have to request, request that in writing ahead of time. And then again here, um, again, are the project notifications that we talked about earlier when the before the contractor mobilizes into the your block of the neighborhood, you should see a project sign placed in the neighborhood area. And then you should also see a door hanger on your door telling you that con construction is about to begin um, directly right, right in your area. Um, and then this note down here just says that this is right now, this is the estimated schedule from April to February for 300 calendar days. This could be affected by unforeseen events like utility conflicts, although we've really tried to identify those ahead of time and do our due diligence and the weather can also affect the schedule. And then finally, here's some contact information. Um, we're gonna make this presentation available on the website, the project website. You can see the project website link is right here. And my contact information is right here with my phone number, and my email. Feel free to contact me with any questions. Our construction inspector, Steve Johnson, is on the call. This is his information. And then Aaron James with the contractor is on the call also. And here's his contact information. So um, that's the end of the presentation. Um, I hope you're all still there. I can't see the attendee list, but I think we have some questions in the chat box now, and we'll try to answer those. I have a whole team here to help me. so. We should be able to do that. Um, Jeff or Brendan, could you read the questions in the chat box? Uh, sure, Chad. Uh, question one, has anything, anything, anything been discussed about possibly putting up some flashing lights for children to cross Dean Road safely? It is a very busy street for anyone to be crossing. So, um, Josh and Lee, can you help me out? Maybe you have access to the plans right now. We are proposing some, some flashing signs with LED lights on them at some of the crosswalks in the project. I believe there's um, four different locations. Josh, could you um, help me out with that? I'm not sure if any of those are at Dean Road. Yeah, so, hey, good evening, guys. Um, Let me go back to the map also. Yeah, let's go look at uh, Diamond Hill first. That's where Dean's at. Okay. So Diamond Hill, you can see the south side of your exhibit there. 
So yes. Hammond Hill and 20 um, uh, Dewey Street, basically, which is 29th and Dewey. Um, there will be a flashing um, LED sign showing pedestrians crossing at that point. So that'll be the the intended crossing point for people traveling from the west, from the north and the west to cross Dean. So there will be a flashing sign there. Um, the other locations are all at WJ Turner. We go look at that exhibit. Okay. I'm sorry. There are two others at Diamond Hill, but yeah, I thought I thought there were. Yeah, so go back to Diamond Hill. We'll finish those out. The other two, we're going to have similar flashing signs at Schwartz, so you can see those two locations there. So right here at Schwartz Avenue at so be, Lorraine and Dewey, where we're doing the ball bounce, correct? That's correct. So right here is where we're doing the ball out ball bounce, and we're also going to be having those flashing lit signs at this location. And then should I go to the next map, Josh? Yeah. So looking at WJ Boaz, we're actually putting a hawk signal along Azel. So hawk signal is a little bit more involved. It has push buttons, it has signal lights that will flash red for stopping traffic. It's much like a, a regular signalized intersection, but it'll be specifically for pedestrians to cross the street. Okay, uh, that was a very good question. I hope we answered it. And um... uh, Chad, she had a follow up question related okay. to that about uh, will residents be able to push the button for the lights to blink, and that would be for the rapid uh, flashing beacon assemblies. So, Josh, I don't think that's what we're installing. We're installing. Yeah, so we're not. The LED. I think that is an option to include, but currently, this the specified signs will be flashing during day or during you know for 24 7. my consideration for that which is that's not the case for the azel so the um the location at wj turner will likely be controlled by a crossing guard so it's adjacent to the school and that does have buttons for crossing it'll be have a little bit more supervised supervised crossing for for students the location at uh Diamond Hill and the consideration for design there is that the crossing at Dean is so far away from the school, it could be used for school hours and non school hours for crossing. So, just advising uh, vehicles that people could be crossing there at any time, we left those lights as flashing uh, permanently. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, another question we received is, do all three schools start at the same time for construction? Um, no, um, they're offset by a month or so. And Aaron, you can tell me more about your schedule, but I've pretty much listed them in the presentation based on what's going to be started first. And then I believe there is an offset in the start time. So Bonnie Bray starts first and then Diamond Hill and WJ Turner, Aaron or um, would you like to answer that or, or talk about that? Or do you have that information right now? I'm not sure if you do. So, yeah, this is Yaju. Hey, Yaju, thanks. Hi. So, yeah, right now on our like, preliminary schedule, we're starting with Bonnie Bray. And I think uh, we're trying to start uh, the next school that's going to be WJ after a month, somewhere around okay. May. Yeah, so so that's the plan right now. Okay. I thought I put them in the right order. I think I, I guess I did not. So we're, they're going to start at Bonnie Bray. About a month later, they'll be mobilizing at W. J. Turner, and I think it's similar a similar delay for for Diamond Hill. So they won't all be starting at exactly the same time. Brent, are there any other questions? Uh, yes. Um. Brandon uh, Hutchinson with TSIT um, has a question on material testing, um, which I can answer. Uh, okay, we'll go cover, ahead. We will cover all material testing with the pre-con um, meeting with TxDOT to be scheduled in the near future. Um, okay, thank, thank you. And then we have a uh, additional question about or a concern about WJ Turner that they have a lack of employees for cross guards. They only have one at the moment, not sure if the lack of funding of hired employees. 
Um, I'm not able to specifically address that as, as far as it's related to this project. Um, my boss may have some information about that. Lisette, can you? Chat. Um, Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. This is Lisette Acevedo. Um, I, I worked for the city for 28 years, and I used to be the school safety engineer um, uh, about 12 years ago. And um, the crossing guard program used to be managed by uh, the police department um, was privatized. The, the police department decided to privatize that and, and hire a, a company to provide that service for the schools. So it's still, it's still managed by the police department, but um, the, it's not, the crossing guards are not their staff anymore. It's just a, a contract company that they use to provide that service. And um, it's very, very, it's based on budget, of course. So the police department has a certain amount of budget for this crossing guard contract every year. And then they have to make sure that they provide these services, you know, throughout the city. So um, if you want more information about that, I, I can uh, reach out back to my police department contact um, that, that I used to work with uh, coordinating school flushers and crossing guards, et cetera, and see about, um, uh, you know, the need for uh, additional crossing guards at WJ Turner and, and see if I can get you more information about that. But, uh, but the crossing guards are not hired by the schools. They're, uh, they're, they're a contractor that is managed by the Fort Worth Police Department. And it is very much based on budget. Um, so they provide crossing guards for the elementary schools only. And also, um, the number of crossing guards that are assigned to each school, it depends on the type of roadway that they're crossing, how much traffic is there. Uh, so a, a school that might be on an arterial that is four lanes or five lanes to get across may have more than one guard um, than uh, just a street that is just, you know, two lanes or, or, or three lanes. Or, but, but the hawk signal is going to help because there is already a traffic signal on Macy Avenue at Azel Avenue, uh, which is the other uh, point where the children cross, there's already a traffic signal there to allow for gaps for the children to get across there. So the Hawk signal on the north end and uh, the school, um, the school facility will will work to um, improve safety on that north end where where they don't have um, right now they don't really have anything to help them get across over there. So. I hope that helped uh, answer your question. And if you would like more information about um, contacting the police department um, about the about uh, you know increasing additional guards if it's possible on the school, um, I can get that for you. Thank you, Lisette. Really appreciate that. That was some really good information. Brendan, are, is there anything else in the chat box? Uh, not at this time. Okay, yes, we can thanks. also. Okay, thanks. We can also take just questions. Um, if you're able to unmute yourself, if you're on the um, attending the meeting, and if you have a question, feel free to do that now. Anyone. Hi, it's uh, Gladys again. Do you mind just re re uh, repeating where the um, turn corners are going to be installed for WJ Turner? Are they? Or what yeah, the, 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 the bulb, what is it called? The ball bounce. Yes. 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 So, well, let me go back and look at the slide just so I don't. Oh, on for WJ Turner. Oh, you're so going to. Mm -hmm. So WJ Turner, it's at, um, in Azel Avenue at Robinson and at Macy's. So let's go back and look at the map. Mm -hmm. So it's in Azel right here and here's Robinson. And here's Macy. So the bull bats are going to be right here, basically on the um, eastern side of the school along Azel at Robinson and Macy. Okay, thank you. Sure. And we're in no hurry. If anyone has any questions, that's that's why we're here and we appreciate you know your input. And we're really glad you all um, came to the meeting tonight. So, and Lisette's here. She can help me answer can all the questions. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. 
Well, I heard you for a second. Um, yes, I have a question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> regarding Dean Road and the flashing lights, the flashing lights that you're uh, talking about, they will just be flashing but not reducing the speed. It's just basically flashing lights to inform that there's pedestrians possibly crossing is what you're explaining to me about that? Josh, that's correct. Is that right? That's, that's correct. We're not proposing any bulb outs or any traffic calming or, or any stop signs or any other improvements on Dean Road other than that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just really concerned about that street, Dean Road. It's a very, very busy street. The traffic um, has definitely built up going through that road with a lot of 18 wheelers crossing through people flying down that road. And I was just hoping that possibly there could be where you could push the button and it would do the flashing red lights to allow um, the residents to be able to cross feeling a little bit more safe for doing that but that's not even in the plans, correct? No, so yeah, what you're describing is a hawk signal that has a lot, it, you know, it, it protrudes out over the roadway and it flashes when the buttons are pushed to, right. to stop traffic. Um, and that, that hawk signal is located at WJ Boas and there's not a hawk signal at the Dean Major. Okay. And then, oh, um, I have, um, go ahead. So, go ahead. Uh, so let me, let me just mention that that just this so the scope of the of the projects for each one of the schools was um was developed in conjunction with the school district and each one of the schools so the school district partnered with the city of fort worth and uh worked a plan and apply for federal funds this project has been built with federal funds from the federal government um and um uh, and so that's how we uh, determine the scope of um, what's included. That that's not to say that we have a uh, neighborhood safety section, uh, part of transportation management group, that we can forward a request to them for them to look at the road, you know, separate from this project. So so this project, the scope is set for this project because it has federal dollars, and we have to adhere to what's included into the plans as they are. Um, it's very difficult to make those significant changes to a project that um, is being you know, built with federal funding. But we can certainly get your information or you can provide your information to chat and he can forward that information to transportation management about your concerns on Dean Road for them to uh, do a study and evaluate, um, you know, if there's additional things that can be done on the road separate from this project. Thank you. I was just trying to make sure that I did get clarification. I had an understanding. I didn't want to walk away from this meeting and um, not have clarification. That's what I was simply doing just for myself to be assured of what was going to put be put there and not have um, unanswered questions. That's why I was just trying to get clarification on that. I do understand about the funding and you know all that stuff, I do. I was just trying to get clarification on that. Okay. But thank you. And, and another certainly, question. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, it was something different from that, from the, the lights. It's about the streets on Diamond Hill. Um, and the blue that you show on there, it says existing curb ramp and sidewalk locations. That doesn't necessarily mean that there are sidewalks there. You're just saying that there should be sidewalks already there and that's why nothing's gonna be done to the ones in the blue, correct? No, ma'am. The blue on that map are actually existing sidewalks. Um, we've done our best to represent the existing sidewalks uh, on this map in blue. So that sometimes you can see blue and then there's some yellow and then sir, there's some blue. That means we're filling in a gap. So to make Got a continuous it. sidewalk, or there could be a part of the existing sidewalk that's in really bad shape and it's a tripping hazard. And Got we want it. to okay. build that. Okay, great. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. Okay. Sure. I just wanted to go back to the contact slide again. Um, 
if you're not calling in and if you do have a visual of the presentation, you can see the contact information. So I understand that um, that lady was just interested for her own information about what exactly was going to be installed on Dean Road. But we do have other programs where we um, take requests from citizens for improvements around the city. So if anyone has a request like that, um, they can forward that to me. And here's my information here with my phone number and my email. And like Lissette said, I would be happy to forward that to our transportation management department, to the appropriate folks over there who run those other programs. Um, we have programs that that um, could um, schedule some improvements like that into future projects. So here's again, here is my contact information. If you're on the phone and if you can only hear and, and not see, let us know and I can read that out or um, I'll get that information to you some way. saw a no pop up. You're very welcome. No problem. We're um, very glad that you attended the meeting. Brendan, are there any other questions in the chat box? Uh, no, just another thank you for, for providing the information on of the upcoming projects. Okay. Um, I do have a question on W. D. W. D. Turner Street on 26th Street, they had um, completely redone, like, so 26th Street going towards Lighted Avenue, they completely added new sidewalks just maybe two, two or three months ago, new sidewalks and new complete infrastructure on the street itself, um, plumbing and uh, I believe maybe sewer, but I think it was just water, new water lines and new asphalt. How could I get involved in terms of giving feedback to get new um, infrastructure, like new asphalt and new plumbing for the street? It's for the main street, just as 26th Street did. Just because with the freeze, I'm sure there was numerous uh, water main breaks and Northside has the oldest infrastructure from my understanding and would like to um, see about getting feedback. We've had numerous water breaks and it continues to happen you know, you know, continuous patching. So how could I get in contact with somebody about that for feedback? And so um, mm -hmm. you uh, please, um, you could, well, I can take a note down and you're, what street specifically are you talking about? Are you talking about 26th street? Um, I actually have a property on 25th street and okay. 26th street, both. Okay. But um, um, just, from the past two years, obviously last year was the worst that it hit, obviously for the water main breaks. We were without water for, I think my mother-in-law for two weeks and for us three, you know, up to a week. And, you know, obviously everyone did the best they can to patch the water breaks. It's just been a little bit sporadic in terms of getting new infrastructure happening. So I don't know what okay. other you may want to know. Specifically. So you could you could e you could email me with my email address that's on that contacts page. Hopefully you, hopefully you could see that we do have we have a um, street program where we go out and we identify neighborhood streets. Mm -hmm. We have large packages of multiple streets every year where we're reconstructing the street. Mm -hmm. um, before we do that work, we we obviously want to go in and repair the old uh, water lines or water lines that might be damaged and sewer lines underneath those roads because. We don't want to rebuild the street and come back and tear them up later to redo the utilities. So we sort of hand, we do, we coordinate those projects with water and sewer and streets all together. And like I said, we have a big program where we do hundreds of streets and um, we, we plan it out years in advance. So mm -hmm. um, your streets that you're talking about may already be on the list. We could definitely look into that or mm -hmm. they may be planned for the future, or we could definitely take your feedback um, to the water department and to our neighborhood streets department and tell them, Hey, these streets and these utilities are uh, seem to be in really bad shape, and we're hearing about that from the residents. So, if you could email me those couple of locations and tell me your concern, I'll be happy to forward that along and give you any information that I learn about the street program. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, said. Did you have anything else to offer about that? 
since you've been here for 28 years, you know, you know everything. <laughs> I don't. Okay. Um, no, but we probably need to reach out to both the water department and Lange group as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So it's going to, you know, we, we'll just, We'll just do, you know, reach out to both of them, to both of the those, uh, the uh, our street maintenance division and our water department, and try to figure out what the plan, what what their plan of attack is, because when water department has water main breaks like that, they're just doing measures, emergency repair, and just kind of like repair the 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 pipe to restore service right away, and then they'll do this. Um, um patch repair you know according to our utility cut policy but um the the streets um might be already into um uh, a, a master plan for them to either be fully rebuilt in the 2022 bomb that is getting ready to go to the voters now in may or on a pago program or the water department may have the intention so since the lines are so old they also may have a master plan for going in there and replacing all the lines. And then with that, they do um, a 50-50 program with the city, with TPW, where they pay for 50% of the payment and, this, and then TPW pays for 50% of the payment. So the street gets brand new payment. So there's several different things that we need to verify and kind of like um, try to find you know information for you. And we'll, we'll be happy to do that and get back with you. Thank you. There was uh, one other question about their um, recorded meeting um, being available and um, on the website. Um, Jeff has answered that, but it will be on the project page tomorrow. And the project page is on uh, Chad's last slide, where you can go to the city's website and search uh, safe routes to school. Um, and it'll be the North project. Yes. Uh, Chad, I'm not seeing any additional questions. In okay. The okay. Um, I'm in no hurry, um, but it, it seems like maybe we're at the end of the meeting. If there's no other questions, Jeff, I think we can go ahead and, and, and conclude the meeting. But again, we're welcome to stick around and go through more maps or, or answer any questions. But it seems like um, we might be done with that. So maybe one last call for questions. Again, I'm in no hurry, and um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to the contact slide one more time. If if something comes up um, in your mind later, and you want to contact me, feel free to do that. I'll be happy to answer your questions later about the project. And Jeff, I'll give you the presentation so you can upload it to the website tomorrow. Is that right? You're going to do that tomorrow. Sure, I can do that tomorrow. Put you on the spot right here in front uh, and, of everybody. Sure, and keep in <laughs> mind, uh, I did I did link the project page on there again. Um, once construction starts, this will be a good place to go um, for any progress updates, uh, you know, where we are. Uh, we try okay. to go on there regularly and say the streets, you know, we're on this street, the street's next, or we just finished a street and we're moving to the next one. Um, so, if you're kind of curious as the project overall, feel free to, to you know, uh, bookmark that page or, or visit it regularly and, and uh, you can kind of follow along or you can just call Chad. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're going to end the meeting. I, I want to thank everybody on my team. Um, Everybody at the city and the engineers and the contractors and material testing folks for attending. I appreciate it. And um, my supervisor. Thanks, Lisette. And Jeff, um, I guess we're going to go ahead and stop. So everybody have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you.